this. <laughs> uh, I am originally from Houston, and I now live in San Francisco, where I work for Square on the front-end infrastructure team. I've only been a software engineer for a little over a year now, uh, and I intend to stay in this industry for a very long time, which means that I have a vested interest in making sure that I don't burn out. And so to that end, I'd like to spend the next 15 minutes talking with you about some of the lessons that I have been learning and how to better manage my energy. Before I go any further, I'd like to give a quick shout out to the artist Gwen Simal, whose work is featured throughout this entire talk. Um, Gwen is an amazing artist. She put all of her work in the public domain, and you can find more of it. She's on Twitter at Gwen Paints, or you can visit her website, GwenSimal.com. So when I first joined Square a little over a year ago, I was fresh out of a computer science program at university. I joined an amazing team of engineers um, that were working on interesting and challenging problems. I was in an environment that really encouraged me to ask questions. I also joined a couple of communities at Square that I was really passionate about, including our women in engineering group, as well as an acapella group. Uh, I decided to mentor a middle school student um, for two hours every week in the fall semester through our partnership with local nonprofit Spark. I also had some really interesting conversations about how to leverage my own privilege, which I have a lot of, um, in order to be a better ally to other people. And then because of those conversations, I started an internally crowdsourced doc that was a list of tangible ways to be an ally. And then for fun, I decided to make a Chrome extension that would remind you to be an ally on a regular basis. So it's safe to say that I was firing on all cylinders and I was loving it. I was shipping code, I was organizing events, and I was giving back to causes that I was passionate about. But I was also really tired. <laughs> I quickly realized that I was going to burn myself out. I was going at a pace that wasn't sustainable for this years-long career that I had imagined for myself. Even though everything that I was working on was worthwhile, I was just giving too much of myself away. And so I began to realize that there was a difference between work-life balance, that it's not just about the breakdown of time on your calendar, but it's also about the quantity and the quality of energy that you expend and where you're spending it. So if any of this story resonates with you or your experiences, I would love to share some of the strategies that I have found helpful as I've been learning them this past year. I am an occasional poet, which means that I love a good extended metaphor. So today we're going to be categorizing um, all of these strategies into three groups that all have to deal with the way that we are like smartphones. We are incredibly powerful. We can do a lot but we have limited energy and it takes time to replenish. So the first category is enable low power mode. The next thing we'll talk about is how to charge your batteries. And finally, the importance of powering down. Really quick disclaimer. Um, as I mentioned, I am carrying a lot of privilege in my invisible knapsack. Um, and so not all of the strategies that I have found successful may work for you. And even more so if you don't have a manager or a team that is respectful when you try to set boundaries on your time and energy. If you are a manager or other leader in your company and the audience, I would highly encourage you to try to create a team culture where people feel enabled and empowered to be able to manage their energy. This means leading by example, as well as making sure that you're not penalizing people who do and set and enforce limits. So what do I mean by low power mode? Low power mode is this great setting on my phone that recognizes that my battery is valuable and limited. And so it makes sure that it's not spending that battery on background tasks. I actually turned it on all day today because I knew that I wanted to be tweeting this entire conference and I wanted my phone to last. So I wanted to make sure that I wasn't gonna be like constantly checking my email in the background because I really don't care. So likewise, we can turn on low power mode in our own lives and we can just leave it there. What this looks like is focusing our energy on the essential task and then dropping everything else. Ruthlessly prioritize your responsibilities. This is the first step. There's so much work that we can do in a day that we want to get done. There's stuff that we really care about, that we're passionate about, as well as a bunch of other stuff that really just needs to get done. The work will never end, but we will stop. 
And so it's important to constantly communicate and negotiate with your manager, your team, or any other stakeholders about what absolutely has to get done this week, or this sprint, or this quarter, and what can wait. One thing that I love to do when a new piece of work comes up is to ask the question, how should I prioritize this with regards to my existing work? Essentially, what can drop in order to make sure that this gets done? And if the answer is that nothing can drop, what that's really telling me is that this new thing is not high enough priority to make it onto my to-do list. Remove work notifications from personal devices. This is going to be tricky and may even be impossible if you have an on-call rotation or any other periods where you're expected to be highly available. But if you are not in one of those times, I would strongly encourage you to just take your work email, Slack, any other messaging off your phone or your laptop at home. So for myself, I found that I can usually have work email on during the week, but I cannot have it on my phone during the weekends. Otherwise, I will check it incessantly and get super wrapped up in work. So Friday afternoons come around, I turn work email off my phone, and I don't turn it back on until Monday morning. Decrease involvement in events and communities. This is a hard one that I realized that I had to do when I woke up one morning and realized that I was on the leadership team of both our general women in Square community as well as our women in engineering at Square community. <laughs> that was a lot to handle, and it also meant that there were less opportunities for other people to gain the leadership experience and visibility. So I decided to step completely away from the women at Square group because I was less invested and involved in that community and to focus my energy on the women in engineering group. But then I also saw all of my commitments through, passed on that knowledge to the next rotation of the leadership team, and enjoyed being a regular member for a while. There may be seasons in your life where you have extra energy, and the way that you would like to spend that is on communities and events that mean something to you. There may also be seasons in your life when that is not the best use of your time. Both of those are okay. And this is something I want you to really hear, is that if you are an underrepresented person in tech, it is not your responsibility to show up, much less lead or organize, any event that is created for you. The only exception is if someone is literally paying you to be there. You are here and that is enough. On a related note, just say no to unpaid diversity work. There. <laughs> There is a difference between deciding to volunteer your time for an event or a cause that you are passionate about and being asked to contribute your work or your time for free, particularly when the beneficiary of that work is a company or a non-marginalized group. Your time and your work are worth so much more than that, and it is not your responsibility to be the face or voice of diversity for anyone. Moving on. The next category of strategies is to charge your batteries. Most of us, if we have a smartphone, will charge it every single night to give it a chance to replenish its energy. The same way, we also need to regularly replenish our energy by identifying what gives us energy and joy and then making time to do that, preferably on a regular basis. So walk outside the office for lunch or coffee. Just leave, go outside, go to a park, walk around the block anything just to get you outside and realizing that there is an entire world out there. I like to do this in the afternoons when I'm having a bit of a hard time concentrating and I'll sometimes invite my coworkers to go along with me. And by the time I get back, I always feel refreshed and ready to tackle the next piece of work. Take regular screen breaks. Um, so for those of us that do look at screens for work, it can be very easy to just always be using the screen. And even if you use a screen reader, you may need to take a mental break from that. So I've found that a lot of times at work, I'm really bad about this. I will leave my desk to go refill my water or grab a snack and go immediately from staring at the big screen of my monitor to the small screen of my phone. And I will walk around the office like a screen zombie. So it's no wonder that at the end of the day, my eyes and my brain are exhausted. So I've started challenging myself, and this is really hard, but I would also challenge you to try leaving your phone at your desk when you're going to take a quick break and just try to relax for those quick moments. Put time on your calendar for creative outlets. 
This is one of my favorite strategies. I love to write poetry, but left to my own devices, I rarely find time for it. So I'll actually put a calendar event on for an hour to go and write poetry. And even if at the beginning I don't have an idea of what to write, by the end, I always feel super energized from using my creative muscles. I can't encourage you enough to find your own creative outlets. It is so invigorating to create something that has nothing to do with your day job, even if you don't show anyone else. Make time for movement that gives you joy. This is going to look different for everyone based on your energy, your interests, your strength, and your ability. But I hope that you can find something that you enjoy. So maybe it's swimming, or doing Zumba, or playing on a wheelchair basketball team, or wandering around your neighborhood, or doing yoga, or breathing exercises, or maybe it's all of those things. Whatever it is that is a way of gently moving your body that gives you energy and joy, make time for that, even if it means coming into work a little later or leaving work a little early. The last category of strategies is going to be to power down. In the words of the time-honored IT advice, turn it off and back on again. <laughs> the same way we also need to completely rest and reset. We can disconnect completely and give ourselves space to recover and try to do that as often as we can. So leave work at work at a reasonable hour. It's important to not come in too early or stay too late, but it's also important to not do work once we get home. Make this maybe difficult, but I would encourage you to just start with a single day of the week that you commit to not doing work at home. If you already feel comfortable making that commitment, bump that up to two days a week or maybe more. Learn ways to disrupt unhealthy thinking habits. When you find that you are at home and you start thinking about work, you're going to need a way to stop that train of thought and switch it to something else. So I have found that there have been times that I get so wrapped up in trying to solve a tricky problem at work that I will literally dream about it. Um, one time I actually even got a solution while I was asleep, and mind you, it wasn't a good solution. It was just a solution, but I was so excited about it that I immediately woke up, and then I couldn't go back to sleep because my mind was just cycling so hard about this problem. So eventually, I had to just turn on the light beside my bed and read a book for an hour or so before I could calm down enough to go back to sleep. So whatever it is for you that you can find a way to just sort of get your mind back on more calmer topics if you start thinking about work, I would encourage you to do that. Maybe it's meditation, visualization, prayer, or just singing a silly song at the top of your lungs. I will also note that if you find that you're constantly stressed or thinking about work, it may be helpful to see a therapist or another mental health professional, which is actually something I recommend for everyone at some point in their lives. Enjoy your sleep and get enough of it. This may be tricky, particularly if you have insomnia or small children or any other circumstances that regularly disrupt your sleep. But if you know that there are patterns in your life that you can change that are affecting your sleep, go ahead and change them. I found that I actually sleep a lot better and that I go to sleep easier and wake up better when my phone is on the complete opposite side of the room from where I sleep. It's just too distracting, especially when I wake up. Um, another thing is that when I'm on call, I actually can't do that. I like to have my phone on full volume right next to my head because I don't want to miss a page or any other thing that happens during the night. Um, I don't actually get paged at night very often though, but I do have friends and family that live in earlier time zones, which meant that the last time I was on call, I got woken up for about three straight days in a row at 6 a.m. by my lovely best friend as she just began going about her day and started texting me her pictures of breakfast tacos, <laughs> which was great but terrible all at the same time until I figured out how to change my phone settings so that pager duty could come through at full blast, but all of my friends and family were silent while I was asleep. <laughs> Finally, take a vacation and refuse to be reachable. Um, don't either promise to check email or check your messages, because if you say that you will, that only perpetuates a culture of never being offline. You work hard and it, you need a break to just completely restore and rest. And if you work for a small business or if you work for yourself, this may be really difficult, but you could just try to take even half a day for self-care. 
um, and just see if that is a chance for you to really rest and enjoy that time. So we've talked about strategies for managing your energy from enabling low power mode by focusing on the essential things and dropping everything else, charging your batteries by finding the things that give you energy and making time for those things, and powering down by disconnecting completely and giving yourself space to recover. I would love to hear if any of these strategies are helpful to you. Please come find me afterwards or tweet me at Marie Chatfield. I know that there are things that I have missed and I would love to hear from you what your strategies are for managing your energy. I would also like to give one more shout out to Gwen Simmel, the artist. Because her work is in the public domain, I was able to use it for free in this talk. Um, but I wanted a way to compensate her for the work that she has done. So I bought a bunch of her stickers and I would love to give them to you if you come find me afterwards. Uh, I I will be posting these slides um, on Square's engineering blog later today, and I'll tweet out a link when those are live. Thank you again for being such a lovely audience, and have a great day.